Ever wondered about the history of cannabis? It's a tale that takes us back more than 5,000 years to the ancient civilizations of the East. Picture this. We're in China, around 2700 BC, and Emperor Shen Nong, a sage and herbalist, is extolling the virtues of this plant, hailing it for its medicinal properties. He's the first documented figure in history to do so, but certainly not the last. From there, our friend cannabis doesn't just stay put. Oh no, it has places to go, cultures to meet. It starts its journey along the Silk Road, that ancient network of trade routes that connected the East and the West. Along the way, it touches countless lives, influencing societies and shaping cultures. The Silk Road is not just a path for goods. It's a highway for ideas, for knowledge. And the knowledge of cannabis, of its medicinal and recreational properties is one such idea that travels far and wide. It reaches the deserts of the Middle East, the valleys of India, and the steppes of Central Asia. Each culture it meets, each society it influences, adds a new chapter in the annals of cannabis history. So, you see, cannabis is not just a plant, it's a traveler, a storyteller. It has witnessed empires rise and fall, seen civilizations evolve, and been a part of human history in ways we are only beginning to understand. From its humble beginnings in the fertile soils of ancient China, it has spread its leafy wings and embarked on a journey of discovery, a journey that continues to this day. With every passing century, with every culture it encounters, cannabis weaves a new thread into the tapestry of human history. It's a tapestry that's as diverse as it is rich, filled with tales of healing, of shared experiences, and of cultural shifts ignited by this ancient plant. So, from its humble beginnings in ancient China, cannabis spread its leafy wings and set out on a journey of discovery. It's a journey that's far from over, and as we peel back the layers of history, we uncover more and more about this fascinating plant and its enduring relationship with humanity. Cannabis didn't just stop in China, oh no. It took a little vacation, spreading its influence far and wide. Picture this, it's 440 BC, and Greek historian Herodotus is hanging out with the Scythians, a group known for their nomadic lifestyle and fierce warrior spirit. But what do they love more than a good fight, a good weed sauna? Herodotus documented their delight in throwing cannabis onto hot stones and basking in the resulting vapors. It was a communal event, a bonding experience, a prelude to the modern day smoke circle, if you will. But let's hop over to India, where cannabis wasn't just a fun pastime, it was divine. They called it Bang, and it was a sacred offering to the god Shiva. Bang found its place in religious festivals like Holi and Maha Shivrati, where devotees consumed it as a sacrament, a means to unite with the divine. Even today, Bang remains a vibrant part of Indian culture, a testament to cannabis's enduring legacy. Now, let's venture out to sea. As humans began to explore the vastness of the oceans, cannabis, or more specifically hemp, became indispensable. Its sturdy fibers made excellent material for ships rigging and sails. Even textiles weren't left out of the hemp revolution. And guess who was a fan of this versatile plant? None other than George Washington himself who tended to his own hemp crop at Mount Vernon in the 1600s. Pretty neat, right? So there you have it. From Scythian weed saunas to sacred Indian offerings, from the rigging of ships to the fabric of everyday life, Cannabis was making its mark. It was not just a plant, it was a cultural phenomenon, a symbol of communion, a divine offering, and a cornerstone of industry. From weed saunas to sacred offerings, cannabis was making quite a name for itself. As the centuries rolled by, cannabis found an unlikely champion in the West. Enter stage left, Dr. William Brooke O'Shaughnessy, an Irish physician with a penchant for the unconventional. In the mid-19th century, O'Shaughnessy embarked on a series of daring experiments with a little-known variant of the plant, Cannabis Indica. His tireless work was no mere puff of smoke, and the results were game-changing. O'Shaughnessy discovered that Cannabis Indica could alleviate symptoms of rheumatism, hydrophobia, cholera, and even convulsions. His findings created quite the buzz in medical circles, and soon, Western medicine began to sit up and take notice of this leafy wonder. But just as cannabis was beginning to enjoy its time in the sun, the winds of change started to blow. The end of the 19th century saw a growing trend of regulation and control over substances, 
and our friend Cannabis was no exception. The pendulum had swung from fascination to suspicion, and Cannabis found itself under the microscope and in the crosshairs of law enforcement. Despite this, the plant's medicinal potential could not be ignored. Even amidst the brewing storm of regulation, doctors and researchers continued to explore the possibilities that cannabis offered. The plant's potential as a painkiller, anti-inflammatory, and antispasmodic agent was too great to overlook, and cannabis secured a foothold in the annals of Western medicine. Yet, the road ahead was fraught with challenge. The burgeoning field of pharmaceuticals cast a long shadow, and cannabis would have to fight for its place in the sun. But the seeds had been sown, and the plant's potential was now recognized. The stage was set for a battle that would define the place of cannabis in Western medicine for centuries to come. And just like that, cannabis went from a plant to a potential panacea. The story of cannabis in Western medicine is one of resilience and reinvention, of a plant that refused to be boxed in by stigma and suspicion. And as we'll see in the next chapter, the journey was far from over. But not everyone was thrilled about the green revolution. Oh no, the 20th century had a bone to pick with cannabis. You see, in the early days of the 20th century, the Harrison Narcotic Act of 1914 hinted at a future where cannabis wouldn't be as welcome. This was a time when the world was starting to tighten the noose around substances, and cannabis unfortunately found itself in the crosshairs. Then came the Prohibition Act of 1919. Now, this was a real doozy. It set a precedent for national crackdowns on substances, including our beloved Mary Jane. If you thought the party was over, well, you were right, but not before a final hurrah. Enter Reefer Madness. In 1936, this sensationalist film hit the screens, depicting cannabis as a one-way ticket to the loony bin, a gateway to madness and violence. Talk about a PR disaster. This film was the epitome of the era's propaganda, painting a rather unflattering and exaggerated picture of cannabis. Fast forward a few decades and we meet Richard Nixon. In the 70s, Nixon declared a war on drugs, which, let's be honest, was more of a war on cannabis and other substances. This led to the classification of cannabis as a Schedule I narcotic. Yep, you heard that right. Cannabis was put in the same category as heroin. Talk about overkill. Then came the 80s, with Reagan's administration further fueling the anti-drug sentiments. Campaigns like Just Say No and Dare were all the rage, further entrenching the stigma around cannabis. It was like a bad breakup. The love was gone, replaced by suspicion and disdain. Things were looking pretty grim for our leafy friend. But as they say, it's always darkest before the dawn, and dawn was just around the corner. The war was far from over, and the battle for cannabis was just heating up. So buckle up, folks, because the story of cannabis is about to take a wild turn. But remember, every cloud has a silver lining, even for cannabis. In the mid-90s, nestled amongst the Golden State's sun-kissed valleys, a revolution was brewing. California's Proposition 215, passed in 1996, marked a pivotal moment in cannabis history. It championed the legalization of medical cannabis, igniting a spark that would spread like wildfire across the United States. This progressive move set a precedent, and soon other states followed suit, each in their own time and terms. Before anyone knew it, the legalization train was chugging full steam ahead challenging the long-held stigmas associated with this leafy green plant. But the winds of change weren't confined to America. Across the globe, nations began to reassess their stance on cannabis. Uruguay boldly led the charge, becoming the first country to fully legalize cannabis in 2013. From the snow-capped peaks of Canada to the bustling streets of Amsterdam, countries began to embrace the recreational and medicinal potential of cannabis. The push for legalization wasn't just about lighting up a joint, though. It was a statement, a call to arms challenging the demonization of a plant that had served humanity for centuries. And so the narrative began to shift. No longer was cannabis just a gateway to madness and violence, as depicted in films like Reefer Madness. Instead, it was being recognized for its potential to soothe, to heal, to bring people together. So, from demonized to decriminalized, cannabis was making a comeback. So what's next for our green companion? With a journey as vibrant as its leaves, cannabis continues to evolve. As we stride into the future, we see a world where cannabis isn't just accepted, 
but embraced for its medicinal, recreational, and agricultural potential. This isn't just a plant, it's a catalyst for cultural shifts, a beacon for legislative change. And that, my friends, is the wild ride of cannabis. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Peace out, deuces.